Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon, ching, 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 for notification of up and coming videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to rig a Bonnie frigate, <coughs> doesn't really make a difference, for Croc Cooter. Um, before I start, I just want to let you know that here at the Kingfisher, we sell the ready made up traces and I'll just show you quickly here. There is the large saltwater trace that we do at Kingfisher. This one with the bead on is for live bait. We do the one with the skirt on, the chartreuse skirt, which is ideal for off-colored water. We also do it with our um, squiddies on, or soft plastics on. Just a cheaper alternative. It works just as well, guys. Okay, so there's our saltwater sports traces. Um, what we require to make this uh, Cooter trace for our big croc cooter is again number seven American fishing wire as the mid section with size five as the lead hook part of it. Again, the hooks that we use, and that's a personal preference. Some guys prefer the mustard four extra strong in black. I prefer because it's a silver. Um, bait that we're using. I prefer using a silver treble and for demonstration purposes I'm going to be using the number one and this here is 3633 NP needlepoint. Uh, it's our mustard, four extra strong, size four power swivel, 70 pound FC fluorocarbon. Okay. Why fluorocarbon? Fluorocarbon is invisible in the water. It's also more abrasive resistant for the tail rubbing. And of course, it is strong as Russia. It stays straight, very important. Um, there's a wide range of colors that we can use for a bonnie. Remember, if it's a live bait, and I think I'm gonna do a live bait one for you today. If it's a live bait, you don't require any of these. You require a red or a um, green bead. Um, but again, if you're going to use dead baits, again, we use, and I'll just go through the color range. We like to use chartreuse. If it's overcast conditions, dirty water, or if you're down rigging it. The same as a purple. Overcast conditions, dirty water, or if you're down rigging it. The purple works extremely well. Um, if you're having it on the surface or mid water range, our silvers, our uh, mother of pearl, our pink, which is my favorite, or a light combination of pink and silver. For surface, bright, sunshiny day, crystal clean water. Okay. So let's get rid of all of these. And again, if it's a dead bait, put a chin weight on it. It just helps it swim a lot better. I'm going to do a live bait bonito uh, demonstration for you. And for that, like I said, number five or number seven wire. Again, our 3633 uh, NP number one. Because it's not a big bonny, it's a nice size bonny. Number four power swivel, 70 pound fluorocarbon. And I'm going to get a green bead or a red bead. And I'll just show you those beads quickly. Okay, so there are the beads that we use. Um, they are brightly colored. And it's just a slight attractor to attract that fish to your bait. Again, I'm going to use a red one today for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to quickly take one out. And like I said, I'm going to do a live bait one. If it was dead bait, I'd just use a bait swimmer on the front of it with a skirt. Okay, so one bead is all I require. Um, 
Let me just move all this other stuff out the way here quickly for you guys. I'm just going to, I'm basically doing that trace there. Okay. For my lead hook, in other words, for the front hook to the nose, I'm going to be using number five wire. I'm also going to be using a hook. This is the mustard jigging hook. Okay, it's a short shank hook. It is ideal for a live bait here. So for a live bait, we're not going to go through the top jaw and the bottom jaw. We're just going straight through the nose or straight through the mouth. I'm going to go straight through the mouth and show you how we do it that way. So this is a short shank jigging hook. There it is there. If you can have a look. It's a very thick, strong hook. Why a thick hook? A thick hook doesn't tear out as easily as a thin hook. So that hook will go in there and it won't tear. The bonnie can move around as much as he wants. It's not going to tear out. Or if you're going through the nose, it'll sit through the nose like that. It's not going to tear out. Okay. I've got my bead. I've got my hook. I've got my lead piece of wire, which is number five American fishing wire. Take my side cutters. And I'm only going to make it about 30 centimeters in length. So there we go. 30 centimeters of number five American fishing wire. I'm going to stick that back in this packaging. And I'm doing a hay wire twist. On the back of the American fishing wire, this is a tooth proof, you will see the hay wire twist there. Okay. The next is for the trebles. One on either side. <clears throat> I need two pieces, one longer than the other. Best way to do it is just to make one at least 30 centimeters and the other one just slightly shorter. So 30 centimeters of number seven American fishing wire and a slightly shorter piece. And I'll just grab it now. Slightly shorter piece over there. Just stick that back in my... American fishing wire tooth proof. Okay, so that's it there. That's the wire that I'm using. I need two of these 36330 um, needle point hooks. They treble. So I'm going to grab one out here. There we go. So I've got two of them. Close the packaging, put that away. And then, of course, my fluorocarbon, which is the last thing I'm going to work with. Number four power swivel. I'll just grab two number four power swivels out. <clears throat> and these number fours are rated at 91 kilos, just to let you know. So you're never going to break them off, although they look a little bit smaller. Okay. Lead hook, live bait. What we're going to do, I'm just going to do the swivel first. Round nose pliers. There we go. And we're making a hay wire twist. And we make it by making a loop. You can use a, the, a hook. You can use anything to make a round little loop like that. We're then going to take our number four power swivel through. Grab it with a pair of pliers if you want. And all we're going to do is just wrap it around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six times, then bring it to 90 degrees. So that little tag end, we bring to 90 degrees to our nylon, uh, to our wire, so we bring it to 90 degrees to our wire, and we just wrap it around also six times. One, two, three, four, five, six times. To break it off, all we're gonna do is take that arm, bend the 90 degree bend in it, and work anti-clockwise. So we're going anti-clockwise, and there it breaks off perfectly. Just straighten everything out. So there we go. So there is the finished haywire twist with the swivel on it. It's as easy as that, guys. 
Now I'm going to add my bead. Like I said, you can put green on, chartreuse, especially for early morning. Um, and if you're down rigging, chartreuse works very well. I find orange, pink, or red works very well for up in the water column. Now what we're going to do is do exactly the same on this side. We're going to make the loop slightly bigger, so we just go back on our uh, round nose pliers, back to about there, and we're making our uh, loop. There we go. So it's quite a big loop, as you can see. We're going to go through the eye of the hook. Punch that. And what we do is we start it off. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And then we bring that 90 degrees to the actual wire. There we go. Okay, so it's 90 degrees and we're just going to wrap around six times. One, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, six times. Bend it back 90 degrees towards you and you break it off nicely. And we're just going to straighten it out. Just make sure everything's nice and straight here. Okay. So there is the lead hook with our little bead on it. That's what it looks like, guys. It's as easy as that. Okay. Now we're going to take our number seven American fishing wire. <clears throat> and we're going to, again, we're just going to put this through. You can do a haywire twist on it because it's a live bait you need a little bit of movement in it so what we do is we make it quite small take it there there's our loop nice and small and remember welded side up so we start from that way and we go like that grab it with your pliers round nose whatever you're using and again haywire twist one two three, four, five, six, bring it to 90 degrees, and we just carry on winding it. I'll just grab it with my fingers, it's just easier. There we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. Bend that off. So, first one done, we do exactly the same on the other one, 6, 90 degrees, <clears throat> grab it, then we go around 1, 3, 4, 6, there we go. Make sure it's nice and straight. Okay. So I've pretty much done the two trebles plus the lead hook. Now what you want to do is just measure it out. Now obviously you can't do it when you're on the paddle ski or jet ski and that thing. So you can pre-make these at home. You know what size bonnies you've got and you can pretty much measure it out at home and pre-make these traces for your live bait. Okay, so you can tandem it if you want. Have one there, one there, and then the lead hook. One this side, one on the opposite side. I'm going to put one on either side to show you the best way to do it for a live bait if you're going to do a live bait. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get my measurements all correct. There's my lead hook. The long piece, that one that I said was 30 centimeters in length. Remember to keep that up. So we're going to have one there. And where the eye of the hook is, is where you want to 
let's just do it again. So, so you guys can see. So that's where the hook is going to be in the fish's mouth, in your live bait's mouth. So the one hook in line over there with a dorsal fin, that's a back dorsal fin, and where the eye is. So every time you measure, that's where I want it to be. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Keep it nice and small. Okay, so just to show you again. There and there's the R of the hook there. So that's where that treble is going to sit. Okay, we're happy with that. The next treble, you want to be just in the middle, in that area there of your bait. Okay, so just behind the actual fin, the peck fin that is, and the R is where you want to do the next one. So there, I just measure it with my finger, I hold it with my finger. And again, keep it nice and small. Okay. Now, <clears throat> okay, so what you want to do is that needs to go through the wire and the R of the hook. Okay, go through the wire and the R of the hook. There we go, got it. <clears throat> so you can see, if you look at it closely, the wire has gone through and around this wire as well as the R of the hook. The reason we do that is so that this wire can't pull through the actual bend over there. Okay, very important. And the reason is, if for some reason you're pulling a big cooter, the wire doesn't slip through the R and you lose your cooter and you come back and you've only got this piece left. It's because you haven't gone through that piece of wire. And it does happen, guys. A lot of big fish are lost because of a simple error like that. Okay, hay wire twist, here we go. So the first treble is now finished. There it is there. The second treble we're going to put on the, that side of the actual trace, on this side of the trace. And remember, take the wire through the top and come through it. So we'll hold the wire there. <clears throat> take that one. Back through, around. Grab it with your pair of pliers, and you're going to do exactly the same. Just remember to try and keep that treble out of the way when doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then 90 degrees. There we go. Grab it with your fingers, and you're just going to go around six times. Two, three, Four, five, six. Bend it off. Go back 90 degrees. Done. And there we go, guys. Just shake it out. There are our trebles on our cooter trace done. We're then going to add <coughs> to it our fluorocarbon. FC fluorocarbon, the 70 pound. And again, like I said, it always looks like it's thick, but it's invisible in the water, so the diameter doesn't really matter. Because it's invisible in the water, the diameter doesn't matter. Tie our swivel on, it's number four power swivel. <coughs> Figure of eight, three times around, back through. There's our figure of eight, lubricate, slide down. Remember, if you don't know how to do it, top right hand side corner, click on it and you will see the figure of eight, how to tie it. <clears throat> Cut off the tag in there and we attach this now to our trace. And again, tying a figure of eight. One, two, three. 
Slide down. Cut off the tagging. <clears throat> okay, so this is for our live bait. Now, there's two ways you can do it if you want. I'm just going to take the bonny. The one way is to go through the nose, like so. One treble on the left, one treble on the right. That's one option. The other option, and I'm just going to take this all down, is to take that same hook, and this is a jigging hook, a mustard jigging hook. It's got a slightly bent back arm. So take your bonnie, take the hook in the mouth, through the nose, and straight out, like so. So that's all I've done. I'm just going to grab him there quickly. Okay, so that's all I've done. Just pretty much gone through the top of the nose, not too far back. Just through the actual nose area over there, from the mouth upwards, okay? I'm then going to take the long treble. I'm just going to do this. One on the left, one on the right. And always remember, when making your trace, that you make it in such a way that the welded part is always up. So, again, I'm going to hold him there. I'm going to bend the treble, the hook back, go in, and we skin hooking him, literally. There we go. We literally just skin hooking that treble into the actual um, bonito. You'll see the wire goes down. We'll do exactly the same on the other side. <clears throat> Making sure the hook always stays straight. So I'm just going to flick that over there so you guys can see. So I'd normally have resistance on my rod when I do this. I'll take the second one, lay it next to the bonito again, and this is the shorter hook. And all we want to do is just take it slightly further down. Okay? Like that, you see it? And remember the, the welded part. Very important that welded part. Take it, and again, all I'm going to do is pull it towards me and skin hook it. That's all I'm doing. You'll see there's a slight bow in the actual line. That allows for the movement of your bonito when he's swimming around. And this one is a little bit skewed. I'm just going to straighten him out a little bit. There we go, guys. Live bonito rigged. Okay, so you can see the one treble there. Just skin hooked. Second one skin hooked. Okay, so there's my bonny rigged as a live bait. Same trace I'm going to use and show you how to rig a dead bait on this exact same trace. Very simply, all we do is instead of having it in the top jaw like that, we take the hook out, we take a two ounce pair, and just quickly show you something. Let's take it out again. Make sure your R on your pair sinkers that you've got on the boat are a little bit bigger, and you open them up slightly. So all I'm doing is just opening up that hole. I then take my two ounce sinker straight through. Now to rig a dead bait, all we do is we just go through the bottom jaw all the way up. And now we've literally got a bait swimmer on our trace already done. It's as easy as that guys, for a dead bait. You'd still have the bead on, but there we go. Dead bait, rigged and ready to go. So one trace you can use for a live bait and a dead bait. So you don't have to carry a hundred traces with you. Otherwise, just go and buy yourself one of these already made up ones.
There we go, guys. Go out there. Catch your croc cooter. Enjoy, guys. Remember, all the tackle that you've seen used here is available from leading tackle stores nationwide as well as our Kingfisher branches. Enjoy, guys.